This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Let's do it. Good night. Good night, Thomas DeShotter. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am uh, I am amazing. Thank you for asking. I've had a, a beautiful day. I just came back from uh, a trip to California with my family. We were at Disneyland. Uh, one of my daughters competed in uh, uh, a um, California Invitational Gymnastics and came in fifth overall in her in her class. Yeah, oh yeah, it was brilliant. It was all fantastic. That's wonderful. Hey, thanks for sharing that snippet of your life. Uh, so, where are you exactly right now? Well, I live on Vancouver Island, so I live on an island just off the coast of Vancouver, British Columbia, in a in a town called Nanaimo. Mm, Nanaimo, yeah. Well, I was in uh, Vancouver. It is absolutely beautiful. Canada is beautiful, but I'm not too sure about the island. Uh, but I'll definitely look on my Google Maps and check that out. Uh, do tell me which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time. Uh, my talents would be openness to creativity and sharing what I have uncovered in the world. Ooh, tell me more, please. Uh, yeah, I've uh, you know I've been on a as we all have. I've, I'm on a personal journey, and the journey is to bring forth the best version of myself on a daily basis. And it all started when I was a young child. I was, uh, you know, I was called to play drums, and I, I did that, and made records, and toured, and made a lot of uh, great friends along the way, and was always in a creative environment. And I find that uh, even though I moved away from the passion of playing music, my passion for connection with people has endured and that's uh that's what drives me on a daily basis is to connect with people and um you know learn what i can to make myself a, a better version of myself hmm. is that where the podcast began i'm sorry is that where your podcast began yeah, it, it uh, all stemmed from my desire to, uh, you know, I have this burning desire, and I get the sense you you are the same. I have within me this burning desire to share and to um, and to interact with people and find people in the world that are up to stuff and and allowing their voice to be heard. So everything I do seems to always come back to wanting to be creative and wanting to create a space for not only what I uncover, but uh, the people that I come across and allowing them to share their genius. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And you are exactly correct. We do share the same space where that is concerned. Uh, I love it. I love what I do. I love it. Like, I love it. Like, you could not pay me, and I'll do it. Ah, I love it. Yeah, it's just really fun, and I think, yeah, I think within it is a payment for those listening, which is wisdom. Because as I usually say, a fool learns from his own mistake, while the wise learn from his own and the others that are made by others. And I found it to be really fascinating the learning curve uh, uh, of what a Cause in these conversations. Who did you learn that ability from though, to be able to be personable? Uh, my father is, um, you know, I can remember as a child and I, and I've probably, my kids bug me about this now, but my dad, you know, in, in Canada, it's common practice for, um, retail people to, at a, at a cashier to wear a name tag. And so my dad always would address the person by their name tag. So, you know, if the person's name was Glenn was serving us, he'd be, hey, Glenn, how are you today? And the Glenn would look at him like he knew him, right? <laughs> like, but my dad would just, you know, use their name tag and address them as the person they said they were and be a human being relating to them. And I, I remember as a kid being wide eyed watching that, um, you know, from my three foot height looking up and seeing that interaction and that's always stayed with me that when you address people and allow them 
to uh, to be human. It's amazing the level of service they will go to for you as well. It creates instant connection. Hmm. Definitely does. Definitely does. Well, tell me why you will continue to be that person. Because as much as it does have the great advantages, there are, there are the, this. Well, there is. Let's say there is, right? There is, uh, or let's say there are. There are disadvantages as well that go with choosing to be this person. Why will you continue to repeat these skills nevertheless, Thomas? Uh, that's a really good question. And what comes to mind right away is I can't function any other way. It doesn't serve me. You know, I hear what you're saying. So here it is that the amount of discredit that I will get from being who I am far uh, undertones. It, it's far less than the amount of great feelings and great attributes I get in my life for being who I truly am. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing, I'm willing to take the naysayers, I'm willing to take any type of abuse. You know, I was a musician making records. I've been on stage where there's a pause between songs and somebody yelled, your band sucks. Like mm -hmm. I've had that experience and it doesn't bother me. It's like, great. If you don't like my, my dad used to say, if you don't like my fence post, don't swing on my gate. <laughs> and I, and I just live by that. It's to this day, I live by those simple truths of that's who I am and that's who I'm going to be. And if I'm not that, then my life doesn't work for me. Anytime I've shut myself down, it doesn't work. Mm. Well, do tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Okay, so it's not quite three years, so I, I hope I'm not breaking your um, your rule by this, but I decided one one day, I said to myself, you know, when I'm 85 years of age, I want to be able to do 40 push-ups. And it was random. The 40 was random. I don't know why, but I decided that, you know what, if I could do 40 push-ups when I'm 85, that's probably pretty good. And so today was day 854 in a row of waking up in the morning, rolling out of bed, and doing a minimum of 40 push-ups. Wow. How, how many do you think you can do now? Like, like, like just mentally thinking, how many do you think, if you decided to push, how, do, how many do you uh, think you could do? Well, if, if, so I thought about this because, you know, there, there comes the question of if there's a gun to your head, how many could you do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, you know, if I really decided to push myself, I, I could probably get 85 done wow. and and struggle. Uh, that would be a struggle, I think. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. How does it make you feel? Well, so there's been a, you know, there's a book out there called, uh, I can't remember the name right now. It's about habits, but... Um, Here's here's what resulted from that, and I'll just share with your with with your listeners out there that what happened was after about six weeks of doing the forty push-ups, I you know one morning I just glanced in the mirror as I came out of the shower and I thought, wow, you know my upper chest kind of looks like it did twenty years ago. It's like it feels a little firmer. It feels a little better. It looks a little better, and so I had this little moment of feeling a little better about myself on a visual level. And then my wife, you know, a few weeks after that kind of looked at me one day sideways and went, Hey honey, what's going on? You're looking kind of, <laughs> you're, you're looking kind of hot these days. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what that, what that little change did though, was it tuned me into, Oh, well, if, if just doing 40 push ups every day does that, what would my life look like if I went out and walked more often or went on trail runs with my dog or hiked and what if what would happen if i changed my diet and started to focus on eating and so what what came was a cascade of small changes in my lifestyle that has me now at the best shape i've been in in years and it hasn't taken a lot just some little incremental moves along the way have actually made a massive change over the last, you know, 854 days. Hmm. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Thanks again for sharing that. I believe uh, the same principles follow in all aspects of life, be it mental, spiritual, career, physical, financial, personal, family, and then even in business, sales, administration, leadership, operation, marketing, you apply that 
that format right there and it's a principle isn't it just the little things that you do consistently uh, that create big changes yeah yeah i would say that you know the 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 big hey new year's resolution i'm going to go to the gym <laughs> three hours a day for you know four days a week doesn't usually pan out because it's such a massive shift that you can't handle it whereas something really small a series of small incremental shifts are a massive win because you can adapt to them very easily. It's kind of like, you know, your financial. I'm a I've been a financial advisor for two decades now. And it's amazing when you put somebody even on a plan of just $25 a month or $50 a month, after a couple months, they don't even notice it. Mm-hmm. And it and then it just keeps running. And then you can move them up to a hundred dollars a month. And they don't even notice it. It's a, as opposed to saying, hey, I've got to try to find $1,000 a month. Well, that's going to be really hard to do, hmm. right? Hmm. So you're absolutely right. Any, anything you want to shift in your life, I believe if you just take a small degree over time, that one little degree change becomes a massive change over the years as opposed to trying to make a really massive change in one swoop. Hmm. Amazing audience, you're hearing it live again from Thomas de Shutter. You could definitely check out the soft out from him, right? He is the author of Bloom Your Money, Your Life, a Common Sense Guide to Building Your Personal Wealth Ecosystem. And he is the host of the Bloom Living Podcast. You know, you could check that out as well. Let's switch gears for a moment, Thomas. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Thomas, what is your earliest childhood memory? My earliest oof is uh, it's actually going into the hospital and having my tonsils taken out Ouch. at age three and a half. And it wasn't the it wasn't the procedure; it was the experience of being in the hospital. And I still remember this friend I made through the glass. It was a girl about my age who was on the other side of the glass in, you know, so I was on one side of a room and she was on the other side of a room and we were both, you know, in our little beds with our little uh, aprons on. And I remember we both touched the glass with our hand and sort of joined hands through the glass because we were both going through something, but we couldn't, you know, formalize it into words or thoughts, but that memory has always stayed with me of that girl and us sort of reaching out to support each other Hmm. and maybe that's why i feel the way i do about interacting with people to this day that maybe that is also something that's had an impact on me Hmm. that's intriguing can i offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that memory Yes, please. I, I see, you know, with, within what you're doing, you're always speaking about doing two things, you know, so create a life they love while building their own income for life strategies, right? And I think uh, it's always twofold, just like that glass that is there and you are on one side and the other person is on the other side. And the other person can be metaphorically so many different things, be it uh, your health, you know, or your wealth. But the communication really starts by that, by a gesture, by a small move, if you would. And then you'll be surprise of the communication or the uh, reaction you know of that action that you make from the other side be it with your finances again or with your health you know and so many other with relationships but just to see that metaphorically painted in that picture is fascinating to me Mm, thank you for that that's beautiful you're welcome it's yours if you had to share with us your own unique real statement oh I just got a brain fart there. <laughs> yeah, if you had, if we fast forward to when you were twelve years old, what was your favorite song? My favorite song. Yes. Uh, oof. Twelve grades. Uh, I had just discovered the band, the Canadian band Rush, and my favorite song was "Working Man" off their live album, "All the World's a Stage," because it had 
the most amazing drum solo I had ever heard in my life. All right, all right. I'll definitely check that out. All right, my friend. Well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Thomas? Yes. Thomas, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, yes. Are you married? I am. Do you have children? Twin daughters. Wow. Do you believe in God? I believe in a higher spirit, and my version of God might be different than somebody else's, but yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Very tight-knit group of uh, friends, yes, indeed. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time? The phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Less than eight a day. Thomas DeShutter, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say it is? Everything you want for yourself and for your life is within you. Mm, love it. Ooh, this was a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I, I need to know where you're from. I'm from Trinidad. <laughs> you're, so here's what's coming back for me. Your accent. I played in a Bob Marley tribute band in the uh, 1980s wow. f and toured Canada doing Bob Marley songs. And, and you're just bringing me, your, your accent is bringing sure. me back to Straight those to days. Jamaica. <laughs> totally, man. I'm just like, I'm feeling the one drop and I'm just loving it, man. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas, yeah. my, hey, this was a great pleasure, Thomas. I mean, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I, I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe of what you're up to, my friend. And uh, when this opportunity showed up, it was uh, hell yes immediately. And uh, I just want to thank you for your gifts and your zone of genius and what you're bringing into the world. It's beautiful. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. Thomas DeShutter, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you, Angel. You're welcome. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.